So last week, we, again, we've been talking about prospering on purpose through this thing called grace or favor. And we looked at 2 Corinthians chapter 8 in this Macedonia church. And here's another witness for you. And Paul is sharing and talking about this Macedonia church that tapped into the favor of God that was poured out toward them. Um, to every time you face a situation in your life, God has a favor for that situation. And it, whatever it takes, he'll make you the exception to the rule. So nothing can stop the favor of God from coming on your life. Here they're hearing Paul preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and talking about people that were unfortunate or misfortune people. And yet these people who are in deep poverty themselves heard the word and wanted to give into that. And we looked at their lives and how they had super abundant joy to give. Super abundant. I'm telling you how to tap into the favor of God. They had super abundant joy, even in the midst of their deep poverty. They wanted to give and they did it with joy. Somebody say, give with joy. They had spontaneous giving. I mean, the moment they heard about it, they gave. They didn't think about it. They didn't wait till the devil tell them you can't afford to give. Don't forget you got to pay this bill. They didn't wait to hear anything. They didn't tell you know where your next meal is coming. They just spontaneously gave because they tapped into a grace that was being outpoured at the time. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's a grace that's being outpoured on your life. Hallelujah. Every time the word of God is being preached. And how did they do that? They first gave themselves to the Lord and then to Paul by the will of God. And so you first give yourself to the Lord God and then to the work of the ministry and then to what God is doing in your life. If you're doing it the opposite, if you're just doing it because you're trying to get brownie points with me or brownie points in the church, it doesn't work. You got to first give yourself to the Lord God. Hallelujah. And then to the and then he said, and then to Paul by the will of God. And so this Macedonia church learned how to tap into this grace or this favor that God had provided for them. They learned how to access what God had already provided for them. And he, the wealth and the riches that were already in what they were doing. They gave out of their deep poverty. You're like, where did that come from? It was a provision that God had manifested in their lives. You'd be surprised where God can outpour the wealth that he's already provided for you and I. Psalms 112 says wealth and riches. Somebody said they're in the house. So what's in your house? Hallelujah. No, listen to me. Listen to me. Because, you know, there was, a, there was a widow woman the Bible talks about in the book of Kings. And uh, sh the creditor had come and taken her sons away. And she didn't know how she was going to stop them from taking her sons. And she needed it. And she goes to the prophet Isaiah and said, listen, they're coming to take my sons. I need some help here. And he said, what's in your house? Now, what was in her house? Y'all already know the story. I pray that y'all know the story. This is the off a little bit. What was in her house was enough to make her wealthy. She says, all I have is a little cruise of oil. He said, well, go borrow some vessels. Don't borrow a few of them. Go in behind your, in your house, shut the door, and then pour the oil in those vessels. And she poured till there were no more vessels. And then he said, now go sell the oil and go live off the rest. She went into the oil business. I'm telling you this morning, God has wealth and riches that are in your house. Now think about what's in your house. What is in your house that you're sitting on that could make you wealthy? Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know for me, my daughter, she started a posh, mat, a posh, posh mart. <laughs> posh mart, I think it's called. An uh, app. And she downloaded all of my stuff. <laughs> she said, wealth and riches are in my house. <laughs> she downloaded all of my stuff, all her dad's stuff. And she's getting wealthy. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> She goes in the closet. Well, you ain't wearing this no more. You ain't wearing that. Oh, you don't need that. Oh, give me that. And putting it online and making money. What's in your house? Glory to If you would turn to Psalm 112, let's look at this in a Passion Translation. In verse 1, it says, shout in celebration 
in, to, of praise to the Lord, everyone who loves the Lord and delights in him will cherish his words and be blessed beyond expectation. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just grabbing a hold of the word of God concerning this grace called favor. He said, you will be blessed beyond your expectation. It says their descendants will be prosperous and influential. Every generation of the righteous will experience his favor. Hallelujah. This favor is not just for me, but it's for my children after me. That my generations will experience the favor of God everywhere we go. Make that your declaration this morning. The favor of God is on my generation. Hallelujah. They will experience his favor. Verse 3 says, great blessings and wealth fills the house of the wise. For their integrity endures forever. Wealth and riches shall be in your house. You think about what is in your house. And so this Macedonia church, Paul was said he was a witness according to what they had. And beyond their ability, he knew that there was a grace that they tapped into because it was not according to their ability. It went beyond their ability. How many know that's what the grace of God is? It allows you to tap into something that is beyond your human ability. It is an endowment of God's power coming up on your life for you to be and to do something that you couldn't do without it. Hallelujah. It is his grace on your life. And so they looked at God. We remember we talked about God being your source. Somebody say, God is my source. So don't look at yourself to determine what God can do. He is your source. You know, sometimes we just focus our attention on our checkbook, our savings account, or how we can put it together, how we can make it happen. But when you realize that God is, in your, is your source, you tap into an ability beyond you. Hallelujah. And so that's what they did. They tapped into an ability beyond themselves, and it was by God's grace that they had received everything they needed to give because God had already provided all things in the grace that was poured out into their lives. And so they tapped into God's grace of the supply of every need of every area of your life. Somebody said, there is a supply for every area of my life. God is my source. Turn to Psalms 75. He is your source. He's the one that will prosper you. He's the one that will promote you. He's the one that will show you tremendous favor and make you an exception to the rule. Hallelujah. Psalm 75, verse 6 and 7 in the Passion Translation, it says, This I know. That favor, the favor that brings promotion and power doesn't come from anywhere on earth for no one exalts a person but God. Hallelujah. The true judge of all. He alone determines where favor rests. He anoints one for greatness and brings another one down to his knees. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This I know that God's favor brings promotion and power. Listen, stop being upset when they don't promote you. It's not them that promotes you. It's promotion comes from God and God alone. He is your source. And as long as you look into God, like Jenna just found out and discovered later, that God is the one that will promote you. Hallelujah. He will determine where favor rests. Somebody say, let favor rest on me. Glory to God. So we can't look to others to promote us and stop expecting somebody else to do something for you that only God can do. The favor of God will produce to you unlimited, unlimited opportunities. Somebody said, I have unlimited opportunities. I am the exception to the rule. This will cause you to walk in. If you experience this, this will cause you to walk in uncommon favor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uncommon favor. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Remember, a favor is a friendly regard shown to somebody, especially by somebody that is superior. In this case, God's favor on your life. It means to be approved. It is a token of his love. It's preferential treatment. 
is undued with grace and graciousness. Remember that God wants to drench you in his favor. He wants you to be drenched. It's oozing out of you. Everywhere you go, the favor of God is there to promote you, is there to bless you, is there for, to supply everything that you need. God's favor on your life. It means to be honored. It means to be valued. It means to be highly favored. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so God doesn't want us to receive the favor of God to no good use. Let's just look at this real quick. I know we've, over the last few weeks, we've talked about this scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, but I want to read this to you in the Amplified Version. And it says, listen, laboring together, verse 1, as God's fellow workers with him, then we beg you not to receive the grace of God or the favor of God in vain. That merciful kindness by which God exerts his holy influence on souls and turns them to Christ, keeping and strengthening them, do not receive it to no purpose. God has a purpose for giving you the favor of God, but you've got to receive his favor and walk in the favor that God has made available to you and I. He goes on to say, for he says, in a time of favor, of an assured welcome, I, I have listened to and heeded your call, and I have helped you on the day of deliverance, the day of salvation. Behold, now is truly the time for a gracious welcome and acceptance of you from God. Now is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. Somebody said, now is my time. We said in Psalm 102, Psalms 102, verse 13, that God has chosen this time to favor you. Yea, the set time has come to everything. There is a season and a time for everything. And Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says, somebody said, it's my season. It's my time. Now, God has chosen in this season, in this time, to favor you. He said, there was coming a season, there was coming a time that I've chosen to favor you, and now is that time. He's actually, uh, Paul is quoting Isaiah 49, and if you would turn to this, because I love Isaiah chapter, the whole chapter of Isaiah chapter 49 is probably one of, one of my favorites. And so here is God saying to you that there was coming a day and time that he would hear you and help you. And see, the children of Israel had gotten way away from the things of God, and so they've been crying out to God, the Bible says, for 430 years. And so they're crying out to God, and there's so many times in the Bible of, that they got away from the things of God, and they were crying out to God, and God said that he would, there was only a specific certain time that he would hear them and help them. And in his 2 Corinthians chapter 6, God says, Behold, now is that time. Oh, my God, you got to know this is so good. Listen, 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, If I ask anything according to his will, I know that he hears me. And if I know that he hears me, I know that I have the petition of what I ask of him. The whole thing of is knowing that God hears me. You got to know that God hears you. And if God hears you, somebody said, I got it. So God said, there was a specific time that I will hear you and help you. Behold, now is that time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look with me, Isaiah chapter 49. I want to read this to you in a Passion Translation, beginning at verse 8. It's all good, but we're going to start at verse 8. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, Yahweh says, when the time of showing you favor has come, I will answer your heart's cry. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody said, it's time for the favor of God to come in my life. God said, I will answer your heart's cry. I will help you in the day of salvation, for I have fixed my eyes on you. Glory to God. I have made you a covenant people to restore the land and to resettle families on forgotten inheritances. Now, God is favoring them, not only just to favor them, but there's something he wants to do for the nation. 
It's something he wants to do for the people that are around you. The thing about favor is that it's transferable. Oh, my Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to get to that in a minute. But I hope I get to it today. But anyway, you know, you could be around people that have favor on their lives. And because you're associated with them, the favor of God comes on your life. So God is giving you favor, not just for you, but I want to help those that are around you. I want to resettle families on forgotten inheritances. You will declare to prisoners, you are free. And to those in darkness, step out into the light. And they will be like sheep that graze behind the roads and find pastures on the barren hillside. They will never be hungry or thirsty. Neither scorching sun nor desert wind will hurt them, for he, the loving one, will guide them and lead them to restful, renewing streams of water. I will level all of my mountains as a road for them and raise up my highways. Look, they will come from faraway lands, from the, from the north and from the west and from the land of Shittim. He's in other words, they're coming back to the land. So he says, sing for joy, you heavens, shout, you earth, and rejoice with dancing, shouting, and glee. Burst into joy, songs, you mountains, for Yahweh has comforted his beloved people. The word beloved there means his favorite ones, his honored ones, his value one, his accepted ones. He has comforted his he will show you tenderness and compassion to his suffering ones. That there's a place in God for the mercy of God, the loving kindness of God, the compassion of God, that God, it, it will bring out of God because of your circumstances, because of the timing of God to favor you. There's something that comes deep within God that will favor your life beyond your wildest dreams. Hallelujah. This compassion, this deep passion that God has for you. But verse 14, he says, but Zion said, Yahweh has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. I'm all alone. Now you can hear a message on the favor of God and think it's for somebody else but you. You can say that God has forsaken me. I'm all alone. This don't work for me. I've been saying favor of my life. I still ain't seen no favor. You could be just like that. Or you can go with what God has said, release your faith and receive what God has said for you. He said, and Yahweh's response to that. But how could a loving mother forget her nursing child and not deeply love the one she bore? Even if there is a mother who forgets her child, I could never, no, never forget you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, somebody say, God has not forgotten me. Say, I am not forgotten. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said he could never, no, never forget you. Thank you, Lord. You may feel like you're forgotten, but God said, I can never forget you. No, never forget you. He said, can't you see? Can't you see? I have carved your name on the palms of my hand. Your walls are always my concern. Now, he's not just talking about the walls of Jerusalem, though it is make reference to the walls of Jerusalem that have been torn down. He said, they are my concern. But everything about you, every limitation the enemy has put on your life, everything that's missing out of your life, everything you need for life, it is my concern. I have not forgotten you. Can a nursing mother forget she's nursing a child? It's almost impossible. But even though she may forget, I can never forget you. I can never forget you. You are tattooed on the palms of my hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Every time I see my hand, I remember you. Glory to God. Every sin, every time he sees the nail scars in Jesus' hand, he remembers you. He died for you to give you everything you need. It's in the finished work of Jesus Christ that God has provided your prosperity, your favor. It is ever before him. He cannot forget you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. So, if the enemy's telling you that God doesn't care about you, God's forgotten about you, nobody's caring about you, he cannot. He will never, no, not ever, forget to. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Those nails print in Jesus' hand, they are still there. You are forever before him. He cannot forget you. Hallelujah. And so God has said there is a day that he has chosen to hear you and to help you. Don't receive this favor to no good purpose or to no good use. Use the favor that God has given you. He's given you favor everywhere you go. You ought to have an expectation of the favor of God in your life. There's no such thing as failure. There's no such thing as no. God has favored me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Luke chapter 4, we read it before. Jesus said, I've come, verse 19, to proclaim to you the accepted and acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is the day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound. God wants to drench you in the favor of God. Hallelujah. And he said, I love verse 21. He said, he began to speak to them today. Somebody shout today. Today, today this scripture has been fulfilled. Somebody said today. I walk in the favor of God today. He said, this scripture is being fulfilled while you are present and while you are hearing. Glory to God. While you are here right now, the favor of God is going before you, making every crooked way straight. Hallelujah. Right now, this day, today, right now, while you are present and while you are hearing me, right now. Glory to God. Favor is working in my behalf right now. Glory to God. Everywhere I need a favor is at work in me right now. I'm right here, but it's working for me right now. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So how do I get this prosperity and this favor of God to manifest in my life on purpose? And you can, he says, don't receive it to no good use or don't receive it for no purpose. How do I get this prosperity and this favor of God to work in my life on purpose? Number one, let's look at some things. Number one, say pray for it. For it. Hallelujah. Psalms 106, verse 4 and 5. You better put these scriptures on your refrigerator every morning when you get up. That bathroom mirror, <laughs> get up and declare the word of the Lord over your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says in the New King James Version, he says, Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have towards your people. He's praying a prayer. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have towards your people. And we just declared he already has favor toward his people. He cannot forget you. He has chosen to favor you. There's a day where he will hear you and help you. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Jesus is our perpetual jubilee. He is the favor of God. Jesus is grace. Hallelujah. He says, oh, visit me with your salvation that I may see the benefit of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory with your inheritance. He said that I may see the benefit of of your chosen one. Somebody said there are benefits. Benefits are favors. There are favors that you have from God that God has chosen to give to you. Somebody said this day. Let's look at some of the benefits that we have. You got to go to Psalm 103. And I want to read this to you in the Passion Translation. In verse 1, it says, with my whole heart, and with my whole life and with my innermost being, I bow and wonder and love before you, the holy God. Yahweh, you are my soul's celebration. How could I ever forget the miracles of kindness you've done for me? 
Remember, there was a, he said, you know, they forgot that God had blessed them or that God has forsaken them. They thought that they were all alone. How could I ever forget the miracles of your kindness or your favor that you have done for me? Verse 3, he says, you kiss my heart with forgiveness in spite of all I've done. You healed me from the inside out from every disease. Somebody said these are favors that we receive in the finished work of Jesus Christ. In verse 4 says, you rescued me from hell and saved my life. How many got that testimony? You rescued me from hell and saved my life. You crowned me with love and mercy. Verse 5, you satisfy my every desire with good things. You supercharge my life so that I soar up again like a flying eagle in the sky. Anybody need a supercharge? <laughs> Glory to God. You put your super on my natural and supercharge me and cause me to fly again. Hallelujah. I'm not plucking with the chickens. I'm flying high with the eagles. <laughs> Glory to God. Verse 6, you are God who makes, the, makes things right, giving justice to the defenseless. Now, God knows how to make things right. You know, we have a, a big issue with things not being right, and, and that's just not fair. That's just not right. God knows how to make things right for you. If you just look to God, somebody said, he's my source. God is the one that will provide all things for you and I. And God, you got to look to God being your source and not anything else. There are a lot of things that we can look to and look for in our lives, but everything comes from God. And so we've got to pray for it. Somebody said pray for it. First, Corinth, First Chronicles chapter 4, you're familiar with the prayer of Jabez. He prayed for the favor of God. In verse 10, he says, in easy, reading, easy to read version says, And Jabez prayed to the God of Israel and said, I pray that you would bless me or that you would favor me and give me more land. Hallelujah. He prayed for the favor of God. He prayed for the blessings of God to be on his life. And he said, God, that you would be near me and don't let anyone hurt me. Then I will not have any pain. God and God gave Jabez what he asked for. Somebody said, he'll give you what you asked for. Somebody said, ask. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ask for the favor of God. God will give you what you ask for. He will bless you with the favor of God in your life. Job chapter 22. Hallelujah. In the Amplified Version. Let me turn to this because I want to start a little sooner than my notes. In the Amplified. Job. Hallelujah. Because I really want to pull some things out of here. So good. Amplified version of Job chapter 22, beginning at verse 21. And it says, acquaint now yourself with him, agree with God, and show yourself to be conformed to his will and be at peace. By that you will prosper and great good shall come to you. So he says, acquaint yourself, get intimate with God, with him, and agree with God. Agree with what God has said about you, what God is, has for you and I, walking in the favor of God in your life. And he says, and great good and prosperity will come to you. Verse 23, receive, I pray you, the law and instructions from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty and submit and humble yourself before him, you will be built up. If you put away unrighteous far from your tents, if you lay gold in the dust and the gold of Ephraim among the stones and the brooks concerning them, them of little worth, and make the Almighty your gold and the Lord your precious silver. Oh, my God, treasure. 
Make, listen, in other words, he said, don't go after gold, don't go after silver. Make God your gold. Acquaint yourself with the Almighty. Go after God like you go after something else. If you go after God and you go after God like gold, God, make the Almighty your gold and the Lord your precious silver. Then you will have delight in the Almighty and you will lift he, he, and you will lift up your face to God. He's saying so much here. And so God is saying, make God your treasure. Make God the thing that you go after. God wants to bless your life with the favor of God. Remember, it's God that will favor you. You pray for the favor of God. It has nothing to do with uh, you in or deserving this favor is simply because of what Jesus has done for you and I. There are ways, we've said it before, there are ways that you can prosper in life. Obviously, you can prosper on your job. You can get promotion on your job. There are a lot of ways that you can prosper in life in the natural, but it does not and cannot take the place of the favor of God that you can experience in your life when God becomes your treasure. Hallelujah. Listen, his favor is better than any labor you could ever do in life. You can labor in things, but you can have the favor of God in your life, and it's so, so much better. He says in verse, you will make your prayers to him, verse 27. You will make your prayers to him, and he will hear you, and you will pay your vows, or you will do everything that you, you're in a position now to do everything that you have promised God. And so verse 28, and you shall decide or decree a thing, and it shall be established for you, and the light of God's favor will shine on your ways. Hallelujah. You will pray to him, and the light of God's favor will shine on your ways. When you pray, the favor of God will show up on your life. You shall decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. You shall decree a thing, and you will succeed in everything that you do. He said, you decide what you want and it will happen for you, Message Bible says. You decide, you decree. When you pray and decree, it will happen for you. Why? Because the light of God's favor will shine upon you. It's in your time of prayer and you're praying the word of God and decreeing what God has said in these times of prayer. And he said, it will be established unto you. You're going to see what God has said about your life come to pass in your life. He said, this, it will shine upon you. And in verse 29, and when they make you low, you will say, there is a lifting up. And the humble person, he lifts up and saves. Hallelujah. They try to put you down, but God says, no, there's a lifting up. Why? Because I'm, I'm God's favorite. Hallelujah. I walk in the favor of God. He's not only talking about you being put down, but the people that are around you that are being put down. He says, when you declare the favor of God on your life, you will, he said, when they make you low or when they make low or when someone else is put down, you will be able to say there's a lifting up. It's just what we read in Isaiah 49. You will tell to the prisoners, you are set free. You will tell those that are in darkness, step into the light. You'll be able to intercede for somebody else because of the favor of God that is on your life. It even goes on to say in verse uh, 30, he will even deliver the one for whom you intercede who is not innocent. Yes, he will deliver them through the cleanliness of your hands. Or he will deliver them because of the favor of God that is on your life. Ha. Remember, there are generations that God wants to favor. And if your children get off and they do things that are not right, God said because of the favor of God that is on your life and the promise of the generation of favor, even if they do something wrong, they're not innocent. I will deliver them because I favor you. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I will favor them. Glory, 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 glory. Even if they're not innocent, yes, he will deliver them through the favor of God, the cleanliness 
of your hands because of the favor that is on your life. And he gives this awesome example in the book of Job chapter 42 when the restoration of everything that Job has lost had came back to him. And he gives this awesome illustration. And he says in verse 7 of Job 42, that after the Lord had spoken this previous words to Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz and to Temanite, my wrath is kindled against you and against your two friends, for you have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job has. Now, therefore, take seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job will pray for you. For well, I will accept, hallelujah, his prayer, hallelujah. There's a time accepted that I will hear you and help you. I've heard his prayer, and I will accept his prayer, that I deal not with you after your folly, and that you have not spoken of me in the thing that is right as my servant Job. And so they went and did as God told them to. And the Lord and the Job prayed for his friends. Look at verse 9. So Eliaz the Titanite and Bildad and Shulamite and Zohar the Naamite thite went and did as the Lord commanded them. And the Lord accepted Job's prayer. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job and restored to his fortune. When? When he prayed for his friends. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so God has, when we pray for the favor of God, you will experience God's favor in every area of your life. Hallelujah. Number two, and we're going to close with number two if we even get past here. And number two is to seek for it. Somebody says, seek the favor. Say, seek your prosperity. Psalms 119, verse 57 the Passion Translation says, you are my satisfaction, Lord, and all that I need. So I am determined to do everything you say. With all my heart, I seek your favor. Pour out your grace on me as you have promised. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say, with all my heart, I seek your favor. Now, see, you can seek labor or you can seek favor. <laughs> you know, you have a need. You said, well, I got to get another job, get two or three jobs, trying to meet your needs. He said, God, but with my whole heart, I seek your favor. Pour out your grace on me as you promised. God has made every one of us promise. And sometimes we seek everything but God to fulfill those promises. We always beg, borrowing, and stealing from somebody or begging from somebody or thinking somebody should give you something. You come into the church and they don't give you what you asked for. Seek the Lord God with all of your heart. Pour out. He will pour out his grace upon you. He's promised you. Hallelujah. Somebody says, seek, seek for it. Matthew 6, says what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. His way of doing things and his way of doing and being right. And all of these things will be added unto you. The Passion Translation says, so above all, constantly seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. Then all these less important things will be given to you in abundance. They will be given to you abundantly. He says those less important things, what's the most important things? God, let him be your gold. Let him be your silver. Let him be your treasure. Seek the face of God. He will give you everything that he has promised. He will favor your life. Hallelujah. Proverbs eleven twenty seven. I got 27 minutes. Here we go. He says, Proverbs eleven twenty seven. New Living Translation says, if you search for good, you will find it. But if you search for evil, it will find you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. If you seek the good, you will find favor. If you seek what is good, if you seek God, he's good. <coughs> you will find favor. But if you search for evil, don't worry about it. It will find you. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's favor on your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. God wants us to seek him for the favor of God that he has provided for you and I, and to see God manifest his favor. Today, 
purpose in your heart that you're going to walk in the favor of God. That everywhere you go, you're going to experience God preferential treatment in your life. Favor going to show up everywhere you go just because you got there. Hallelujah. And it's contagious. It is transferable. Hallelujah. You can get around people and experience favor. Thank you. You can't get around me and experience favor. Hallelujah. You, the favor of God will be up on your life. Come on, stand to your feet. We'll pick it up next week. Hallelujah. Today is the acceptable time. The day that God said he will hear you and he will help you and show you tremendous favor everywhere you go. Lift up your hands before the Lord God. Father, I'm asking. You said to ask for the favor of God. I'm asking for the favor of God to be on the house of victory. God, that your favor will be on every person that is listening. God, you said there will be a time acceptable that you will hear and you will help. You said today is that day. Now, behold, is the day of salvation. The day when free favors from God will will profusely abound towards your people. God, drench your people in the favor of Almighty God. God, we release the labor and we walk in the favor of God. We look to you, God, to provide all things that you have for your people. Lord, let them know by your spirit that they are not forgotten. You cannot, will not, will never forget them, Lord God. So I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you will show yourself strong in in their behalf. Supercharge them today, Lord God, in the favor of Almighty God. May your favor rest on them. As we seek your face, Lord God, you are our treasure. You said if we seek good, which is you, God, we will find favor. And God, I made the favor of God rest upon them. Bless them with the favor of God. Enlarge their territory, Lord God. Keep evil away from them. Don't let anything bad happen to them, Lord God. Father, we are decreeing this morning, and we declare it shall be established Hallelujah, we will succeed in the favor of Almighty God. And for this, God, I give you praise and much thanksgiving. Come on, if you agree with me, give your God a bigger shout of praise. Hallelujah.